Now there's a lot of great Tailwind component libraries out there, so why Daisy? Something that I personally like is that it's pure CSS. It's framework agnostic. That means you don't need JavaScript coming from Daisy in order for these components to work. So for all these components like navbar, I can get a really nice simple interface by being able to come over here, find the component I want, copying the code, and pasting it in my app. I can also customize these components exactly how I want. Because it's Tailwind, I can just simply append Tailwind classes. But not using JavaScript also has some trade-offs. While this doesn't really matter for something like a card component that's just going to be HTML and CSS anyways, other UI like an accordion, for instance, requires some kind of interactivity that usually uses JavaScript to achieve that. Now, in my opinion, this can be also a good or bad thing, where being able to provide some basic functionality like the accordion is a really good example of this. But other things like a carousel, you can kind of start to see where that falls short in being able to provide an experience that someone might expect when trying to use components like this. But later in this video, we'll see what options we have when we want some of that more enhanced interactivity. But we're going to start off inside of a fresh new Next.js application where I already have Tailwind installed. And I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of everything inside of the project to start. I'm even going to get rid of the default class names in there and just add test for now, as well as just remove some starting CSS from the global file. And we can see we have our simple page that just it says test. Now heading to the Daisy UI installation page, we can see that we still need to actually install Daisy because what's going to happen is it's a plugin to Tailwind. So through that Tailwind processing, it's going to inject those styles that we can easily use throughout the site. So I'm going to copy that dependency. I'm going to paste it in and install. I'm going to copy this require statement and inside of my Tailwind config file, I'm going to paste it in under plugins where now we're ready to go. So let's start off with a simple thing. Let's just add a button. If we start to look at the button page, we can see that we have a lot of options for how we can actually style this and actually add it to the page. Now, I personally don't like the outline version of buttons. I just like a regular old button. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy the simple one, except maybe with the brand colors. So let's go into the JSX and let's grab our primary. And I'm going to replace test with that button. And we can see once we reload the page, we now have that primary button. But let's take this a step further. How about something like, I like this hero component under the layout section. So let's select hero. And I'm going to scroll down and let's find, I like this big one with all the different imagery in the background. So I'm going to copy this JSX and I'm going to copy this entire block. I'm just going to go ahead and replace that button with my hero. And as soon as we reload the page, we can see we now have this beautiful hero and we didn't really have to do much. We were just simply copying that over. Now, of course, if I wanted to update this background image to actually my image, not the Daisy UI image, I can replace that with whatever URL that I want. And I now have my beautiful space themed hero. And let's think more about this layout. Usually when we have websites or web apps, we have some kind of nav bar and we have some kind of footer. Now, as I showed earlier, Daisy also provides a lot of options for different navbar styles where I want to build an e-commerce site. So how about I grab this navbar for e-commerce with a shopping cart? I'm just going to simply copy that snippet. I'm going to go ahead and paste it above that hero. And we can see that I immediately get this nice looking navbar. Now, hold up. You might be thinking, why would I want to paste my navbar inside of my homepage? And you wouldn't. So let's first get rid of that and instead open up our layout, which is going to be able to have a better way to control global styles or global layout features like a navbar. So what I'm going to do is actually Actually post that above any of the children, which would actually be the content of the page. So I'm going to paste in my navbar. But once we refresh the page, we can see that we still have this navbar. But if I wanted to add a new page to my site, such as if I create a new route for different products, we can see that when I go to that page, I still have that navbar in place. So similarly, if I want to add a footer, and I think I like this design the best, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that JSX, and this time paste it below my children, we can see not only do I get that footer on my homepage, I get it on any route that uses that layout. And just as a quick tip, if I want to fix this issue where my footer is hugging my actual content, I can set up a grid layout with this using auto 1FR auto for my rows, which will allow me to dynamically resize the inside of this. So no matter what page I'm on, whether it's on this route or the home page, it'll always work as expected. So how about this product page though? What if I want to start to show what a product actually looks like? And the nice thing is a lot of these components can be repurposed for really whatever you want, since we have the ability to actually customize anything where probably makes sense to have an image with my the title of the product, some information, and a buy now button. So I think this one works really well. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the JSX and in my product page, paste that in. I know I'm going to need to replace my image, so I'm going to go ahead and replace this with my own. So now when I look at the page, we can see that I have my nice hero where I have the picture of what this product's going to be and I have some information, but let's tidy this up a little bit. But there's a few things here that I want to tweak. So starting off, I want a little bit more space between these elements. So again, because we're just simply using Tailwind, I can come up to the wrapping parent, which is a flex container, and I can simply add gap of, let's say, 12. And we can see that it has some nice breathing room now. 
but I also don't want this section to take up the entire width of the page. So how about I also add a max W of let's say five XL. I want to also mat at a MX auto so that the X axis gives them auto margin. And I think that's looking a lot better. Now, of course, we can appropriately start to name these things like spacesuits. I can even use ChatGPT to give me a quick description where I can paste in, update my button to buy now. And we now have our product page for our spacesuit. But I don't think we have enough details. Let's add a little bit more where we want a little bit more product information. Of course, we can add a little bit more text to start to give some more description to our page. But what I'm really looking for here is an accordion where I can start to add a lot more information to the page that doesn't really take up a ton of vertical space unless that person has interest in actually learning about that specific thing. So how about this one with the plus and minus icons? I can grab the JSX and paste it in. We're dropping it inside. I think this is looking pretty good. And all we need to do now is customize that content, which we can continue to use JPT and make sure on your checked input, let's just change this to default checked where we have our product info, our specifications, and we can see that we also get a nice warning. Now, for the most part, this is how all the components are going to work. And we can even customize some of the colors and the theme. But what happens when we do want that enhanced interactivity? Now, given we're in Next.js and React, we can really use anything we want, any kind of component library to drop in the components that we need. But staying on the theme of Tailwind component libraries, there's no reason that we can't mix and match all the different component libraries as long as we're trying to make sure we're maintaining a similar visual pattern for all the different components. So for instance, if this accordion is just not cutting it, like one thing that bugs me is I can't close the same item. I have to click another one to open it. I can opt into something else like Shed CN and simply just use the accordion from there. Both of these libraries ultimately use Tailwind CSS, so it makes it easy to all filter that through the same Tailwind processing. Just a quick heads up though, if you're installing Shad CN after installing Daisy UI, the automated installation will wipe out your plugins. So make sure you go ahead and re-add require Daisy UI, or if I go ahead and install the accordion, I can now copy the imports, drop them into my application. And now whenever I want to actually add that accordion, we can see that they're working happily together. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I just use Shad CN to begin with? There's a lot of really nice things to like about Shad CN. It's a pretty amazing component library. I'm just really particular with how I write my code, where while this sheet is pretty amazing and I really don't want to write that by hand, so I want to go ahead and copy that into my app. While the React hook form is pretty damn powerful, it's just not really my cup of tea. So for most of these components, I'd rather just copy in the native HTML that I can then customize to my liking, both including the styles and being able to add the interactivity to it, rather than being stuck with the opinionated way of doing it when I want to have an opinion for how those components are written, even if that means giving up some of the out of the box features that makes Shad CN so great. But there's a lot of different Tailwind component libraries out there, even an official one. What's your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Next up, let's check out another component library that uses Tailwind under the hood, where we'll use Tremor to build beautiful data visualizations in our app. 